Welcome. Today we're going to talk about math and math operations. We're going to look at some operators and we're going to also look at some expressions so we can see how we can put all this together and have a really fun time building some cool stuff. So here we have a couple expression examples. We got average equals total divided by 5 and sum equals 1 plus 2. Uh, in the first example we're going to take variable total, take its value, divide that by 5 and store the result in average. Uh, the next line we're going to take whatever variable 1 stores plus what variable 2 stores and add that up and put that result in sum. Standard stuff just like what you'd see if you were dealing with some expressions in math. Here we have our operators. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. Modulus is dealing with remainders. We're going to hold off on that. We'll deal with that here in just a little bit. Now we have just some basic integer math examples. 6 plus 5, 6 minus 5, 6 times 5, and then 6 divided by 4. So these pretty much generate the results that you would expect. The only one that might be throwing you off a little bit is the division. The reason that comes out as 2 is because 6 and 4 are both integer constants, integer literals. So if I take 6 and divide it by 4, 4 goes into 6 one time with a remainder of 2. Because we're dealing with whole numbers and we're not dealing with any decimal values, you're going to get just the whole number division. And the remainder component we'll look at whenever we get into modules. So here you have real number math, you have decimal math. All these results are about the same. When you, in this example, whenever you do the division 6.1 divided by 5.2, you get one and some change because that's what you would expect. You're not going to get a whole number result on this one because obviously both pieces have decimal values. So here we have a couple brain teasers, right? We got one divided by two. How many times does two go into one if both values are integers? Two goes into one zero times, you're left with a remainder of one. When you have 1.0 divided by 2.0, you have fractional values, decimal values. Your result is going to be a fractional value. So 1 divided by 2, both integers, you get 0. 1.0 divided by 2.0, you have decimals, you're going to get a decimal value. Here we've spiced it up a little bit, right? So we have one, one piece is decimal and the other piece is integer. If any part of the expression when you're doing division has decimal values, your result is going to be a decimal value. Here we have 1 divided by 0. Anytime you do division by 0, that's a runtime error. Whenever you divide 0 by something, uh, the result is 0 because obviously nothing can go into 0. So you're left with, or your number of, number of division processes would be 0. All right, remainder. Whenever you're using the modulus, which is the percent sign operator, you're basically looking to see how much stuff you have left over. So when you have 2 mod 3, how many times does 3 go into 2? 0. And so you're left with 2. I do this all the time in different situations and I always have trouble with people misinterpreting this. When you have a small number modulus, a big number, the result is always the small number. Oftentimes we have this discussion and people say, well, it's got to be 3. 2 mod 3 is 3. Well, it can't be 3 if I started with 2. So you can't have a bigger remainder than what you started with. Doesn't make doesn't make any sense. When you have 3 mod 2, 2 goes into 3 one time, you're left with 1. That's, that's pretty easy to understand in that situation. So one of the cool things you can do with modulus is you can use it to take base 10 numbers apart. So when you take a number and you mod it by 10, that's going to give you the rightmost digit. When you take a number and divide it by 10, that basically lops off the rightmost digit and leaves you with everything else. And so in this example, 45, 45 mod 10 is 5 and then 45 divided by 10 would be 4. We'll, we'll deal with this uh, mod 10 divide 10 a whole lot throughout the process because it's very important to understand how it works. Here's some examples of remainders. 9 mod 3 is 0. 3 goes into 9 three times. There's nothing left over. 9.2 mod 3. You can't do mod with decimals. You're left with a remainder of 0.2. It's a little weird. We're not really going to do much with the whole mod and decimals, but it's something to mess around with if you find that interesting. Okay, let's go take a look at this with some code examples so we can make sure we totally understand what's going on. Let's talk about math and math operations. Let's look at some examples and make sure that we understand exactly how this works. So, in this example, we're looking at some integer math. The addition, subtraction, and multiplication, you get exactly what you'd expect. You get 11, 1, and 30. The next four examples have to do with integer division. When you're dealing with integer division, anytime you divide an integer by an integer, you get an integer result. So when you have 6 divided by 4, 4 goes into 6 one time, so your result is 1. There's no decimals involved because neither of 
the constant values that you're dealing with, the six or the four, have a decimal component. So anytime you get a decimal result or you want a decimal result, one of your two parts of the expression have to be decimal values. So six divided by five, five goes into six one time. You're left with a remainder of one. Two goes into six on the six divided by two three times. You're left with a remainder of zero. And six divided by one, one goes into the six six times, left with a remainder of zero. So we'll talk about remainders in a minute. We'll talk about mod, which is the percent sign, in just a second so that we can make sure we understand how that works. Here we have some decimal math. We have uh, 6.1 and 5.2, and we have several other sets of numbers that we're working with. The addition, subtraction, and multiplication. I mean, all of these are pretty much what you'd expect. The only one that's a little strange when you run it and print it out is 6.0 minus 5.3. That, obviously, we understand is 0.7. But when you're dealing with doubles and floats, decimal values in most programming languages, there are some inaccuracies that occur. And this is a very good example of that inaccuracy. So we'll talk more about that later. Right now, just understand sometimes when you're doing math in certain ways with uh, doubles and decimals, you're going to end up with some in inaccuracy stuff, some things that throw you off a little bit, but it's not a big deal at this point. When you're doing the division, we have 6.1 divided by 5. Once again, as long as one part, one piece of the equation is a decimal, the result is a decimal. So let's look at division a little bit more closely. Here I have quite a few different examples, to, so I'm trying to demonstrate all the different combinations that you can see. 1 divided by 2, both the 1 and the 2 are whole numbers. As a result, the answer that you get on that one is 0. The next three, either one part of the expression or both parts of the expression, the left or the right, are decimals, so you get decimal values on all of those. Whenever you come down on line 10, line 10 I have commented off, if we run line 10, Line 10, you're going to get a division by 0 because 1 divided by 2 is division by 0. can't divide by 0, but that's not going to pop up until your code is running. All right, let's rerun that. Make sure we're good. All right, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. So now if you go down a little bit further, we have 0 divided by 1.0. It's okay to divide 0. It is not okay to divide by 0. And then the next four are just simple examples of division. We have 3 integer examples of division and then we have a decimal example of division so most of these are looking like what you would expect all right the last math operator the last process we want to look at is how do you get a remainder how do you how do you get the remainder from a division so on the first example i have two mod three two mod three how many times does three go into two three goes into two exactly zero times so when you look at that option your remainder is going to be two so 3 goes into 2 zero times, you're left with the 2 that you started with. Oftentimes when we're looking at a small number mod, a big number, a lot of people get mixed up for some reason and, and they convince themselves that it is the big number. So if I had 2 mod 3, there's no way the remainder could be 3 because I started with 2. And so if you, if you don't get that, you can do a little greater than, less than kind of thing and, and you should be able to sort it out. 3 mod 2, 2 goes into 3, one time you're left with the remainder of 1. Uh, the mod that we have on here with the 45 mod 10 and the 10 mod 45, those are just some bigger numbers that you can see to try to make things a little clearer. So when you have 10 mod 45, 45 goes into 10 zero times, you're left with a remainder of 10. And then the next three standard stuff, we're just doing some decimals as well as some, uh, as well as some whole numbers. And you're starting to see some more of the floating point inaccuracies occur on the last three on the last three values. So 9.2 .9 mod 3. 3 goes into 9. 3 times you're left with 0.2. So that's what, your, that's what your answer is, but it's a little bit skewed because of the inaccuracies that you're seeing there. So anyway, pretty standard stuff. We've looked at addition, subtraction, multiplication, and modulus, and we've looked at it with integers and with decimal values.